msomaji wetu kutoka hapa Christian Bible Church Tumaini Television mjini Nakuru katika kaunti yetu ya Nakuru katika nchi yetu ya Kenya. Mimi ni Bishop Dr. Charles Marita anayekuletea ibada hii popote pale ulipo. Leo ningependa tujifunze juu ya faida ama ahadi ya kumcha Mungu. Faida ama ahadi ya kumcha Mungu. Tutasoma maandiko kadha wa kadha kutusaidia kuelewa kumcha Mungu ama kumheshimu Mungu ni jambo la muhimu sana katika maisha yetu. Maana Biblia inasema kwamba Mungu ni mkubwa kuliko nafsi zetu. Na kwa hivyo anastahili kuheshimiwa, anastahili kuogopewa kwa njia mzuri na baadaye kunyenyekea mbele yake. Tutasoma Saburi mbili mstari wa kwanza mpaka mstari wa ine. Inasema haleluya. Heri mtu yule amchaye Bwana. Apendezwae sana na maagizo yake. Faida ni gani? Wazao wake watakuwa hodari duniani. Kizazi cha wenye adili kitabarikiwa. Nyumbani mwake mna utajiri na mali. Na haki yake yakaa milele. Nuru huwazukia wenye adili gizani anafadhili na huruma na haki Ukisoma hiyo maandiko vizuri utaelewa kwamba unapomcha Bwana na kumuogopa Bwana kwa njia mzuri faida ndio hizo tumesoma hapo Faida ni kwa boma yako Faida ni kwa wazao wako Faida ni kwa nyumba yako Pia nuru inakuzukia katika giza Maana yake ni kusema Mungu atakufunika na mabawa yake na hakuna mabaya itakupata na boma yako na jamii yako maandiko ya pili tutasoma ni medhali mlango wa mbili mstari wa ine inasema thawabu ya unyenyekevu ambayo ni kumucha bwana ni utajiri ni heshima nayo ni uzima thawabu ya unyenyekevu ya kumucha bwana ambayo ni ya kumucha bwana maana uwezi kumcha Bwana bila roho ya unyenyekevu ndugu na dada wakati unapata mtu ni mnyenyekevu angalia nyuma yake ana roho ya kumcha Bwana maana tulijifunza wakati uliopita kwamba Mungu anawapa wanyenyekevu neema na anawapinga wenye kiburi tulijifunza kwamba nyenyekea chini ya mkono udari wa Mungu na wakati wake atakuinua kwa hivyo tunaona kwamba kuna dhawabu ya unyenyekevu ambayo ni ya kumcha Bwana utaanza kuona utajiri itakufuata utaanza kuona heshima itakufuata na uzima pia utakuwa sehemu yako kumcha Bwana sio hisia zile za kinyume kumcha Bwana sio hisia zile za kinyume cha kumuogopa Mungu kwa njia mbaya kutetemeka na kuhofu hapana tunatiwa moyo na naona Mwenyezi Mungu kukaribia Mungu na ujasiri. Kake kitabu cha Waibrania kumi, kumi na tisa nasema hivi. Basi ndugu kwa kuwa tuna ujasiri wa kupaingia patakatifu kwa damu ya Kristo. Unaona kwamba damu ya Kristo imekufanya umestahili. Unapoingia patakatifu sana, hauingi na kutetemeka na ile hofu mbaya. Maandiko nasema tunaingia na ujasiri na damu ya Yesu Kristo. Njia ile aliyoitoa aliyetuanzishia iliyo mpya. Kwa hivyo Yesu ameleta njia mpya kupitia kwa msalaba wa Calvary. Sikiliza ndugu kumwaga damu kwa Yesu msalabani ni njia alitutengenezea kupitia kwa mwili wake. Wakati tunaeleba kivi kukaribia Mungu itakuwa majuto kukaribia Mungu itakuwa na hofu na wasiwasi sasa Mungu amekuwa baba yetu ingawa ni mumba wetu kupitia kwa damu ya mwanake Yesu Kristo Yesu ametengeneza njia kupitia kwa mwili wake ametengeneza njia na damu yake sasa tunaweza kuingia patakatifu na ujasiri sio mimi ningie niaba yako sio wewe uingie kwa niaba ya mwingine kila mmoja wetu kupitia kwa Yesu amepata nafasi 
ya kuja mbele za Mungu aliye mtakatifu lakini na damu ya Yesu Kristo. Kwa hivyo Yesu ametengeneza njia na ametuanzishia njia mpya iliyo hai. Na usikilize maandiko yako wazi na hayana kificho. Hii njia Yesu ametutengenezea kwenda mbele za Baba ni njia iliyo hai. Kwa sababu yule ameitengeneza yuko hai. Na kwa sababu naishi Kristo tutaishi pia. Na hiyo damu inaongea mambo mazuri kuliko ya abeli. Tunaweza kuwa watu wa heshima, tutaweza kutajirishwa kushoto na kulia, tunaweza kuwa watu wale wana uzima sio tu uzima wa muda bali uzima milele. Kwa hivyo hapa tunaambiwa kwamba hii njia mpya ni njia iliyo hai ipitayo katika pasia yani mwili wake. Wakati Yesu alikufa juu ya msalaba Pasia Jerusalem ilipazo kutoka juu mpaka chini na nje ikatengenezeka kwenda patakatifu sana. Hiyo ni kusema kila mmoja wetu ndugu na dada kupitia kwa msalaba wa Yesu na mwili wa Kristo na damu ya Kristo tunaweza kuingia patakatifu sana na ujasiri tukijua kwamba Kristo ametutengenezea njia kwenda kwa patakatifu sana. Hii inatusaidia kueleba kwamba Mungu ayuo kinyume chako amukitengenezea njia mpya tena njia iliyo hai sio mwingine ni Yesu mwenyewe Bwana anasemaje na kuwa 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 kuani mkubwa juu ya nyumba ya Mungu sasa tuna kuani mkuu anaitwa Bwana Yesu yule anayeguzwa na unyonge wetu yule anayeguzwa na udhaifu wetu sasa Kristo amefanyikana kuwa kuani wetu mkuu na ningependa kusema hiyo kuani anajua kazi yake vizuri sana. Hakuwazima damu kutoka kwa kondoo na mbuzi. Damu yake yenyewe inatosha. Alitoa mwili wake kama dhabiu iliyo hai tena takatifu kwa ajili yako na kwa ajili yangu. Wakati tunaeleba kivi hata safari hapa duniani ya imani inakuwa rahisi kuongeza na changamoto na matatizo na shida na pia inakusaidia kuangalia mahali pale unaenda mahali Kristo amekaa mkono wa kulia wa baba katika ulimwengu wa kiroho juu zaidi ya mamlaka yote juu zaidi ya nguvu zote juu zaidi ya enzi zote juu zaidi ya majina yote huyu Yesu yuko juu zaidi na angependa tuinue tufike kiwango kile chake lakini sio bila msalaba lakini sio bila damu yake pasia imepasuka nje imetengenezeka wa ndugu na badada tunahitaji sasa kuingia kila mmoja wetu ana nafasi akiwa hai na ndio sababu ningependa nikufundishe kwa ile njoo utaeleba kama unataka kuona uwepo wa Bwana kama unataka kuona faida ya kumcha Bwana sikiliza hii na tukaribie wenye moyo wa kweli kwa utimilifu wa imani Hali tumenyunyiziwa mioyo nituache dhamira mbaya tumeoshwa mili kwa maji safi sasa dhamira yetu sio sichafu mawazo yetu sio mabaya tunajua kwamba tumesafishwa na damu ya Yesu na naona Mwenyezi Mungu kama maji imetusafisha tunaweza kuja mbele za Mwenyezi Mungu na dhamira safi na sio dhamira mbaya hii inakusaidia kueleba Mungu amekufungulia njia ina kusaidia kueleba Yesu amefanyika njia ya kwenda kwa baba na ndio sababu kisomo wa Ibrania 4:16 inasema hivi inasema kwamba wa Ibrania 4:16 inasema kwa sababu Bwana mwenyewe wa Ibrania 4:16 inasema hivi wa ndugu na badada tuisome ili tupate kuwa na imani ya Mungu basi na tukikaribie kiti cha neema kwa ujasiri sasa sio mwingine ni yule amesafishwa na damu ya Yesu. Ni yule amepitia njia ya msalaba kwa pasia mwili wa Yesu. Amesafishwa dhamira zake. Sasa ni msafi mbele za Mungu. Na maana yake anasema hasa ukikaribie kiti cha neema. Maana yake sio kiti cha hukumu. Na ndio sababu maana anasema yote akiwa ndani ya Kristo Yesu ni kiumbe kipya. Sasa hakuna hukumu kwa wale walio ndani ya Kristo Yesu hawatembi kwa namna ya mwili bali wanatembea katika roho mtakatifu 
Mungu ametutengenezea njia kupitia kwa Yesu. Sasa tunaweza kuja kwa kiti cha neema kwa ujasiri ili tupewe tupewe rehema na tupate neema ya kutusaidia wakati wa mahitaji. Wa ndugu na badada una shida ni kweli? Wa ndugu na badada una mahitaji ni kweli? Mamba ya endi vile unataka lakini unaalikwa kwenda kwa kiti cha neema ili upate rehema na neema ya kukusaidia wakati wa mahitaji. Hii sio mwingine kuombe Kristo amekuombea na ametengeneza njia. Kama we ni mwaminio wa kweli na unaamini maandiko, wewe umealikwa uje kwa ujasiri kwenda kwa kiti cha neema na ukuje na ujasiri. Maandiko nasema tumeokolewa kwa neema, sio kwa matendo yetu mazuri. Kwa hivyo tunapokuja katika kiti cha neema, tunakuja kama wale tumesamehewa, tumetakaswa na damu ya Yesu, dhambi zetu zimesamehewa na sisi ni viumbe vipya na tuna ile isie ya kumucha Bwana kwa sababu ya kila ametutendea. Kwa hivyo wewe mwenyewe fanya bidii kuongeza na mahitaji yako shida zako. Mungu hajakufungia mlango, Mungu amekufungulia mlango Bwana Yesu. Yesu akasema mimi ndio mlango wa kondoo. Apitae kupitia kwangu jambo la kwanza naokoka. Anaingia na kutoka na anapata malisho. Hapa tunaambiwa ili upate msaada wakati wa mahitaji Sijui ndugu na dada una mahitaji gani Mungu anakuita umulete kwa kiti chake cha neema na usije na wasiwasi sio lazima upitie kwa watu umealikwa personally individually hapa tunaambiwa tusipitie kwa wengine hatupitii kwa Petro hatupitii kwa wahubiri hatupitii kwa kanisa fulani kama umemwamini Yesu kama Bwana na mwokozi wako you are entitled to go to the throne of his grace so that you may find grace and uh, mercy to help in times of need that is an open invitation to all who believe in the finished work of the cross once you understand this it becomes so easy for you to come confidently and boldly to the throne of his grace god is ready and willing to meet you at the point of your need. God is ready and willing to give you the desires of your heart. We serve a good God. That is why it's very important for us to realize that by humility and the fear of the Lord, riches and honor and life is a part and a portion in your life. God is willing to reveal his grace to you and the abundance of his mercy. But you must have that heart of willingness to come before him without fear but not without the blood of Jesus Christ and come through the new way through his flesh the body of Jesus Christ na ndio sababu kiangalia kumucha bwana ni nia ile uliyonayo safi ile umepatiwa kama mkristo na inakusaidia kumucha bwana na kusaidia wewe katika njia zote ufanye yaliyo saba useme yaliyo saba unvutiwe na uangalie vile unavyofikiria na mali unaenda katika maisha kumucha bwana ni kusema unajitia nidhamu mwenyewe you discipline yourself what you say what you think and what influences you and wherever you go without this the fear of the lord is null and void <coughs> you are not forced to fear god you are encouraged to fear God because of who he is in your life. It is you to learn to teach yourself what you listen to and what you watch in life. <coughs> That's how fear of God works in a believer. It is not somebody to follow you up. It is you to follow your conscience up if it is a right attitude. Hii ni moyo wako unaitikia ukuu wa Mungu. <coughs> Nasema huu ni moyo wako unaitikia ukuu wa Mungu. Unaelewa Mungu ni mkuu. Na sio lazima uambiwe, angalia bingu na nchi, angalia maumbile yote ya Mungu <coughs> na vitu vyote Mungu amefanya, utaeleba Mungu ni mkubwa. Na pia utaeleba kwamba Mungu ni mtakatifu. 
Sasa hii itakusaidia kiasili tu na kikabaida kumcha Mungu. Kumuogopa Mungu kwa njia mzuri. Na baadaye utaanza kudhihirisha upendo wako kuja kwake na kunyenyekea bila kushurutishwa. Popote pale ulipo chochote kile unasema, mawazo unayowaza, kile unasikia, kile unaona kitakuvutia kwa njia ya Mungu na kwa sio njia mbaya. <coughs> na ndio sababu leo ningependa nikuambie kwamba kumucha Bwana ni wewe mwenyewe utaamua. Uishi maisha ya haki, uishi maisha ya utiifu. Unaona ni wewe na Mungu. Sio wewe na bashirika mwingine. Sio wewe na kanisa mali unaenda. Hii ni uhusiano wako na Mungu personal relationship. Unapomjua Mungu ni mkubwa, is almighty majesty and you understand who God is, it's very easy to fear him, not in a bad way but in the right way. You love him and you reverence before him and you obey him to the letter. The beneficiary it is yourself. So you come to a place where you hate what God hates. You come to a place where you love what God loves. That's the fear of the Lord. It is you to choose what God loves, you love it. What God hates, you hate it. What God wants to see, you want to see it. What God doesn't want to see, you don't watch it. Anything which contaminates your mind and your heart cannot benefit you in the presence of God. We are talking about men and women who have made up their mind to love the Lord with all their hearts and reverence be before him without being coerced. Proverbs 8:13 in a semaje. The fear of the Lord is hatred of all evil. Once you fear the Lord, you simply naturally fear evil. You don't pursue evil, you pursue that which is good. Unapomcha Bwana unadharau mabaya unachukia Hata yawe mazuri namna gani kwa sababu inamchukiza Mungu unayawacha mambo mengine tabia zingine mawazo mengine hisia zingine vitu vingine tunasikia na kuona kama vipendezi Mungu yule anayemcha Bwana anabachana nayo ili apate faida ya kumcha Bwana utajiri heshima maisha marefu abarikiwe mashambani mujini akiingia na kutoka uzao wa tumbo yake na boma yake hiyo ndio faida ya kumucha Bwana wakati unaeleba kivi hautafuatana na hisia za watu ama vile watu wanasema na wanaona hauendi na umati ile tunasema public opinion unaenda na opinion ya neno la Mwenyezi Mungu tunaeleba vizuri tumesamiwa dhambi zetu ni kweli Tunaeleba vizuri tunajua neema ya Mungu tumeokolewa kwa neema na sio kwa matenuti mazuri ni kweli lakini pia hiyo inatusaidia kutuleta katika mahusiano mazuri na Mungu wetu Sasa ili sasa tupate kubakia katika mahusiano mazuri ya Mungu kuongeza tumeokolewa kwa neema kuongeza dhambi zetu zimesameheba ili tubakie katika ile kumcha Bwana katika miguu ya Yesu Lazima tuwe na roho ya kukubali kumucha Bwana. Kile kitakufanya ukae katika miguu ya Yesu. Kile kitakufanya ukae katika kiti cha neema na ungoje rema za Bwana ni kumucha Bwana. Na ndio sababu ni muhimu sana in life. Only the fear of the Lord can keep you where God wants you to be. Yes God has forgiven you of your sins. Yes we know we are saved by the grace of God. It is very true. It has brought us to the right relationship with him. It is very true. But the fear of the Lord is the one which is, will keep us there. In that fear of the Lord, you will be able to love God and to praise him and to serve him with all your heart. So the fear of the Lord is very important in our lives. It's not what you are doing. It's who God is in your life. Is the way you take God the almighty God the holy God the creator of the heavens and the earth you see the greatness of God and something tells you reverence before him something from within you tells you obedience is better than sacrifice obey him and your life will never be the same again 
Ningependa tuchukue mifano michache. Wale watu waliomjua Mungu na kumucha. Mtu wa kwanza ni Ibrahimu. Maandike nasema katika mwanzo 22 mstari wa 12 inasema hivi Genesis chapter 22 verse 12. Tuangalie vile maandike nasema. <coughs> Tuanzie mstari wa 19. Na hivyo ndivyo vizazi vya Isaka. 22 mstari wa mstari wa 12. Sikiliza hii. Malaika akamwambia na akasema, "Usimnyoshee kijana mkono wako, wala usimtendee meneno lolote." Kwa maana sasa ninajua ya kwanda kwamba unamucha Mungu wako. Huku nizuilia mwana wako wa pekee. Unaona Mungu anazumuza kutoka mbinguni juu ya Ibrahim. Baada ya kungoja ahadi miaka mingi na Mungu amempa ahadi Isaka. Sasa namwambia mtoe huyu mwana wako wa pekee katika mlima nitakuonyesha. Acha nikuonyeshe kumucha Bwana ndicho muhimu hapo. Hata sio utiifu ni kwa sababu alikuwa na mucha bwana. Wa pili ukiangalia ni Ayubu, moja moja. Inasema katika nchi ya Uz, kulikuwa na mtu alikuwa anaitwa Ayubu. Na maana yake anasema alikuwa hana hatia, alikuwa na mabaya, alikuwa mtu wa saba mbele za Mungu na maandiki nasema alimcha Mungu na akageuka kutoa kwa maovu. Hivyo ndivyo Mungu alivyomuona Ayubu. Alimuona kwa tabia yake Alimuona kwa misemo yake, alimuona kwa mienendo yake, kwamba yule mtu muadilifu, amesimama vizuri upright. Tena amechukia maovu. Na maana yake anasema anamcha Mungu. Na maana yake anasema hapa alikuwa anatembea katika njia za Bwana kwa unyenyekevu. Hiyo ni ya pili. Ya tatu ni kanisa la kwanza, kanisa la mitume. Matendo ya mitume 9:31 nasema Kanisa Judea Muzima, Galilaya na Samaria lilikuwa jambo la kwanza na amani. Jambo la pili lilijengeka build up. Jambo la tatu walitembea katika kumucha Bwana na katika faraja ya Roho Mtakatifu. Na maandiko nasema Mungu akaongeza ilo kanisa kwa njia zote. Unaona kanisa la kwanza la mitume kuongeza na miujiza na maishara na mambo ya ajabu maandiko nasema jambo la kwanza walikuwa na amani moja na mwingine jambo la pili maandiko nasema kwamba walijengwa katika imani yao kwenda juu jambo la tatu walitembea katika kumucha Bwana na Roho Mtakatifu akazidi kuwafariji na baadaye maandiko nasema kanisa likazidi kuongezeka mfano wa ine ni Waibrania tano saba juu ya Yesu Kristo Maandiko nasema siku zile zake za mwili Yesu akatoa maombi na sala na dua kwa kulia sana na machozi na maandiko nasema akamulilia yule anaweza kumuokoa kutoka kwa mauti na maandiko nasema akasikizwa kwa sababu alimucha Mungu <coughs> alimucha Mungu maana unaweza kuomba unaweza kulia Unaweza kufanya mambo yote lakini kama umichi Bwana hayo ni maombi yanaenda chini. Wakati unaomba Mungu wa juu hakikisha moyo wako ndugu na dada unamucha Mungu. Na maana yake nasema akasikizwa kwa sababu alikuwa anamcha Mungu. Na kweli kabisa Mungu alimfufua toa kwa wafu na akampa jina liko juu ya majina yote. Hii mifano ine ni ya muhimu sana katika imani ya Kikristo. Hii mifano ine tukiangalia ni wale wanaume na wanawake waliomcha Bwana. Na kwa hivyo unaweza kuona tofauti hapa duniani ya wanandugu na wadada wanaomcha Bwana na wala wamuchi Bwana. Hii tabia yao inaonyesha vile walinyenyekea na vile waliheshimu Mungu wa mbinguni. Na ndio sababu tunahitaji kukuza uhusiano wetu na Kristo tunahitaji kukuza uhusiano wetu na Mungu. Hizi tabia ndiyo tunataka kwa kanisa, kwa watumishi wa Mungu. 
unapata cheti inaitwa degree ya unyenyekevu cheti cha unyenyekevu cheti cha heshima unamheshimu yeye na unakuza uhusiano wako na Mungu kwa njia speciali kwa njia tofauti sana kuliko wengine na kuzumuzia wewe unayetaka kukua na kuzumuzia wewe unataka utajiri wa kweli na kuzumuzia wewe unataka heshima kutoka kwa Mwenyezi Mungu na kuzumuzia wewe unataka maisha yako yaongezeke na uzima wa Mungu uonekane na kuzumuzia wewe unataka kisasi chako kiwe hodari na nyumba yako ibarikiwe na uzao wa tumbo yako na kuzumuzia wewe umeamua kwa vyovyote vile kwa sababu ya Calvary kumcha Mungu na ndio sababu mtu wa kwanza tuliangalia ni Ibrahimu unaona kwamba alikubali yeye mwenyebe kutoa mwana wake wa pekee huyo ndiye alikuwa wa dhamana sana kwake sasa ni hivi lazima ujifunze katika maisha kama Ibrahimu unapoambiwa ufanye kitu hata kiwe cha dhamana kabisa kwako kitoe kwa moyo mkunjufu kama unamcha Mungu kama umuchi Mungu kama Ibrahimu utakataa hata utasema ni shetani anaongea ndio sababu Mungu akikwambia utoe mali yako utoe mahusiano yako utoe chochote kile ama mipango yako ama haja za moyo wako kama unamcha Mungu haitakuwa ngumu lakini kama umuchi Mungu kuna mambo utakuwa mchoyo na ubinafsi mtu anayemcha Mungu hana uchoyo tena hana ubinafsi na hao ndio watu wanatajirishwa hao ndio watu wanaheshimika hao ndio watu Mungu anafungulia milango na marisha binguni hao ndio watu wanakula mema ya Bwana katika nchi ya walio hai hao ndio watu wanabarikiwa kama nyota za binguni na mchanga wa baharini ulize Ibrahim atakwambia alimcha Bwana sio tu kutii Mungu bila kumcha Bwana na kile cha dhamana aliulizwa kutoa alifanya hivyo kutoka ndani mpaka malaika wakasema Abraham Abraham usimchinje mwanao maana leo ninajua unamucha Mungu wako haisemi unamuomba Mungu wako haisemi unamtii Mungu wako tu inasema kumucha Mungu that should be your lifestyle that should be your character fear of the lord should be your lifestyle fear of the lord should be your character heaven will speak to you utaanza kuona utele wa Mungu wherever you are under the sun God will open the windows of heaven and declare heavy blessings upon your life and your family and wherever you are you are going to be a blessing. Wakati kumucha Bwana kunaongezeka katika maisha yetu kutakuwa na utiifu kamilifu na hatuwezi kushikilia chochote nyuma. Nataka kusema tena when the fear of the Lord increases in our lives there will be a complete obedience that doesn't hold anything back wengine tumeshikilia mambo mengine hatutaki kuwaachilia tumekuwa na ubinafsi tumekuwa wachoyo kwa sababu ya hii kumucha bwana hakujaongezeka katika maisha yetu uliza cornelius act chapter 10 verse 1 it will tell you that man feared the lord he held nothing from god he gave his arms he gave his offerings he gave everything he had and he prayed always and he fasted a fear a man who fears the lord will hold nothing from the lord he will be a very generous man and woman wherever they are that is why it's good to fear the lord so that you may increase in your life so that someone 12 may become a practical a reality in your life so that proverbs 22 verse 4 may be a reality in your life it is you to cause things happen my friend not god to cause things happen already god has caused things to happen through calvary he has given his son jesus christ it is you now to go through that veil with the blood of jesus learn to fear the lord and then do what is necessary god will bless you and become a blessing when we come to job's life we find the evidence of our respect for our god job respected god he was very rich but yet very humble he was a very generous man who reverenced and respected god he was blameless he was an upright man in all what he said in all what he did we should emulate such a men and women 
who got the best from God, regardless of what they went through. Our conduct, our character, what we say, what we see, what we watch, what we think, should be aiming at the cross. We should mind of the things which are above, where Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father in the heavenly places. I am talking about the benefits of fearing the Lord wherever you are. God is no respecter of persons. You live a life of fearing the Lord, the hand of God will come to you, the hand of God will bless you, the hand of God will strengthen you, and you'll become exactly what God wants to be in this world. You'll never be a bother and a curse, you'll be a blessing wherever you are. Our life should express purity, holiness, and our commitment to deliberately turn away from evil. In other words, it is you to choose deliberately to turn away from anything evil. It is you to learn how to love God wherever you are. Even when you go through difficult situations and times and circumstances, you must have that positive attitude of fearing the Lord. It cannot be seen until you learn to reveal what is in your heart. Problems are there. Adversities are there. Times and seasons are in the hands of God. You might be in a situation which is so hard. But let's see this. Your attitude to worship in spite of adversity is what will determine how, fear, how you fear the Lord. Because other things do not matter anyway. In the long run, what will stand? Do you really fear the Lord regardless of the difficulties you are going through? Do you worship him like Job? After what hit him left and right, he went down and worshipped God. That's the attitude of a man and a woman who ever compromised on the cross. He loved the Father to the end. No wonder he's called the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. No wonder he's called our great high priest touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So we have all equal opportunities wherever we are. Persecutions are there. Challenges are there. But don't compromise from doing the right thing. Be bold in witnessing for Jesus like the early church. They became effective. They became fruitful in their testimony. In their testimony concerning Jesus. And the result was this. They had what we call peace in the inner man. And they had what we call security. Wakatu nasimama na kumucha buwana. Utakuwa na amani katika mtu andani. Na utakuwa na usalama katika maisha yako. Hawitaji usalama kutoka inje. Hawitaji amani na ukuja na mali na vitu. Unapata amani pita ufamu wote. Unapata usalama na ulinzi kupitia kwa nguvu za mungu. Na ndiyo sababu utanza kujua baraka za mungu. Na utanza kujua thawabu ya kutembea katika kumucha buwana. A life of inner peace and security. Knowing the blessings of God is the reward of those who walk in the fear of the Lord. You can never know the blessings of God and the reward from God if you don't walk in the fear of the Lord. We are talking about the benefits of fearing the Lord. Loving him, reverencing yourself before him, no matter what. It is you to make up your mind to be exactly what God says. Again, we see Jesus Christ, we consider our master, who is our perfect role model. We find a person who always had a clear knowledge of the will of God. That's how we should be. Know the will of God. Good and acceptable. Perfect will of God like Jesus. He lived with a definite sense of God's direction and purpose, which came from his relationship with God. You cannot have a sense of direction in your life and you will never fulfill your purposes until you have this, what I call, fear of the Lord within you and then make sure that your relationship with God is right. Aliishi na wazo la muelekeo muzuri. Aliishi na maisha ya kusudi. Na mausiano yake na baba ilikuwa ya ndani. Na ndiyo sababu tunaona pa kwamba mungu mwenyebe kuongeza na yale mamba lipitia. 
ilimsaidia katika maombi yake na kutoa machozi maandike nasema kwamba alisikizwa kwa sababu alimcha bwana the key in hebrews 5:7 is this god heard him because he feared the lord you can pray as much as you can you can cry and shout but you must have the fear of the lord read hebrews 5:7 it will show you jesus did exactly what you are doing but on top he knew fearing the lord is the key those prayers will not have been answered without fearing the lord i want to repeat it again until it becomes part of you because some of us have prayed so much fasted so much and nothing is happening is because you have not searched your heart so deep i'm talking about the benefit of fearing the lord which god is ready to reward you and to bless you from here to eternity i believe you are getting this scripturally it is you to think about it and to act promptly it is your life it is your tomorrow it is your future it is your family it is your health once you realize the benefit of fearing the lord you not look for other people to compliment you no it's all about you and god it's all about you and jesus it's all about you and your heavenly father the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge that is how you can have knowledge that's how you can have wisdom if you learn to fear the lord genuinely i'll read the last scripture then we pray together ecclesiastes chapter 12 ecclesiastes mubiri mubiri mlango wa 12 tuangalie vile daud solomon anasema na usikilize mubiri 12 verse 13 hii ndio jumla ya maneno yote yamekwisha sikiwa baada ya kusikiza mambo yote kutoka mhubiri mlango wa kwanza mpaka 12 anafanya ile tunasema summarizing yale maneno yote tumesikia yale maneno yote amehubiri anasema hii ndio jumla ya maneno yote katika maisha lazima kuwe na jumla ya maneno yote katika maisha yako na baada ya anasema yote yamekwisha sikiba Hakuna kitu nasikia hujasikia. Wa ndugu na badala sikilizo umesikiza wahubiri wa kila aina. Umesikiza mafundisho mengi, umesikiza wahubiri wengi, lakini nafika mali unafanya ile tunasema maamuzi conclusion. Unafika mali unasema sasa jumla ya maneno haya yote wamehubiri. Wale umeelewa na hujaeleba. Sikiliza nasemaje. Muche Mungu. Muche nani? Mungu umesikiza mahubiri umesikiza mafundisho umeenda kanisa hii umeingia hii lakini mwisho wa maneno yote kama mchi Mungu wewe ni hasara kama mchi Mungu wewe ni tabu na shida ndugu na dada kama mchi Mungu na uzai matunda na uhusiano wako na Mungu sio saba unajikosea milele kama kuna mtu alikuwa na utajiri na heshi na mambo makubwa ni huyu Solomon lakini amefika mahali amekusanya maneno yote ameweka hapo na akagundua haya mambo yote bila kumcha Bwana ni ghasia ni, ni takataka haya maneno bila kumcha Bwana ni upepo tu itakuja iteleka kila kitu anasema mche Mungu nawe na uzishike amri zake ukishika hiyo na saburi 112 utagundua kwamba kumcha Bwana inakuletea heshima na kudumisha neno lake katika maisha yako Kumucha Mungu na uzishika amri zake maana kwa jumla ndiyo impasayo mtu. Hiyo ndiyo kwa ujumla inampasa mtu yuko chini ya jua. Habe nchi gani, habe kabila gani, hawa amesoma jasoma, tajiri na maskini, jumla ya mambo yote ndugu na ni kumucha Bwana na kushika amri zake. Maana hii ndiyo inampasa kila mtu. Kwa nini? Kwa maana Mungu ataleta hukumuni kila kazi pamoja na kila neno la siri likiwa jema ama likiwa baya 
Hiyo kisoma pia wa Korinto wa kwanza tano kumi itathibitisha zote tutasimama mbele ya kiti cha Mungu cha Yesu na tutatoa hesabu yale mambo tulifanya katika umwili yawe mazuri ama mabaya. Hii webe na mimi hatutaepuka ingawa kuna neema ya kuokoka juu ya kulipwa lazima tutende yaliyo saba. Ningependa kusema mpaka kesho tutaenda sehemu ya pili. Faida ya kumucha Mungu Utaenda tu kwa tu upate kueleba Biblia hii ina mambo yote. Biblia hii hakuna mtu kitu imetuficha. Iko wazi kwa kila mtu afungue na asome. Ni yule tu ataki, anataka kuoisha vile anataka, ni anaweza kusema vile anataka. Lakini wale tumejua siri ya kuendelea, siri ya kumucha Mungu, siri ya kumuona Mungu. Lazima tufungue Biblia na tuisome kwa makini. Na tukae chini ya miguu ya mitume tufundishwe kwa utaratibu na tupate imani ya kumucha Mungu na kutembea katika amri zake na kutenda yaliyo sawa hapa kwa sababu tunampenda yeye aliyetufia msalabani. Ningependa kusema kutoka hapa mpaka kesho ibada nyingine sehemu ya pili. Fuatilia haya mafundisho usaidike. Maana kilo nasikia ndicho kitakusaidia ndugu na dada. Kila ujasikia Mungu hawezi hukumu nayo. Yesu akasema maneno nimewaambia hayo ndiyo yatakuhukumu. Na ndio sababu mmebeba Biblia uwezi kusema hujaisoma. Na ndio sababu tunakukumbusha tu una maisha ya kuishi. Ungependa kuongeza udhamana na faida katika maisha yako. Njia ni moja ni kumucha Bwana, kushika amri zake na mengine waachia Mungu. Mungu anajua kutajirisha. Mungu anajua kutoa watu kwa, kwa matope na takataka. Mungu anajua kuinua watu juu na nawabariki tena kupindukia. Mungu akubariki na akulinde, fuatilia hii na usikose sehemu ya pili kesho. Asante sana.